Hi. 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 Um, I was just inquiring because um, I've been doing some research into my family and right. I found a relative of mine, James Thomas Bedborough, okay. who I know has quite a lot to do with Windsor. And uh, I just, I was given a bit of information today and I was just wondering where would I go for... Could, where could I find more information? I think probably the best bet is the newspaper. Archives. Newspaper. I was going to say yeah, newspapers. If you take a seat at the table. I'll see what is I can that all right? Yep, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Oh wow, that's enormous. It's heavy, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I found something in there. If you um, have a look at the page that I bookmarked, you'll find something about oh, that there. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Right. 1865. Okay. Oh, oh no, this is... Oh no! Um, it says here, dreadful suicide at Upton Park. George Bedborough, JT's son, shot himself through the heart. And they found him in a in a pond. That's unbelievably sad. Just trying to work out times because 1865. I think was was he alive still? He wasn't, was he? JT died. But not, not long before, was it? Because he died in 1860. So it's about five years after his father's death. And he'd been very strange in his demeanour of late, more particularly whenever the subject of his late father's property had been mentioned. He says, they've done me out of the land and the houses in Upton Park. Well, this isn't at all what I was expecting to find. John Bedborough. I reside at Windsor. The deceased is my brother. He was in his 52nd year. He had the management of the Upton Park estate. He had said to me these last four years past that he was afraid he should lose his senses. So he clearly was kind of worried about his mental health. And he was really disappointed at the result of his father's will. And I think that's kind of the thing that sent him over the edge. So Upton Park caused someone's death. That's really sad. Upton Park holds um, a lot of answers, I hope. Upton Park near Slough was to be James Thomas Bedborough's most prestigious project. Davina's meeting local historian Brigitte Mitchell. Davina, I'm Hi, Brigitte. Hi, Brigitte. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I believe you want to yes, well, find I've, out about this building. I've got so many, so many questions yes. because I was just—is this the original Upton Park? This is it. Yes. So and I've got a picture. Hang on. Have a look. Okay. Well, this is obviously taken from the other side, but this one in yes. the centre. Yes. That was where James Bedborough lived. Quite a splendid house, isn't so it? The whole centre. The whole one. of that. Yes. Oh. What do you know about the circumstances of his death and the will? Well, he, and... he was just old. Uh, um, he was, was 72 or something yes. when he died. But his vision was to build this wonderful housing estate for the rich and famous. But, but it caused left, a great he, he sadness, left, didn't it? He left a very sad legacy. Capitalising on his reputation as a successful entrepreneur, James Thomas Bedborough risked over £20,000 on purchasing the land he needed, the equivalent of more than £2 million today. His crowning development was to be a private estate of 50 exclusive homes set in their own park, leased to the professional classes. But his ambitious plans were never completed. On his death in 1860, only 29 of the properties had been built. Acres of expensive land stood empty and potential profits unrealized. The heavy financial commitments he'd taken on at the outset were to bring tragic repercussions to his whole family. 
This is another entry from the Windsor and Eaton Express. Ah, yes. Ah, the late Mr. Bedborough. The mystery which surrounded the disappearance of Mr. Bedborough has cleared up on Sunday morning, when the worst apprehensions were most fully realised by the discovery of his body in the Thames. Which Bedborough? 71. This is after JT. When did George die? 65. God. So they must be talking about a different Bedborough. Mr. Joseph Radner, pawnbroker, said, I have seen the body of the deceased and I identify it as Mr. John Bedborough. John was George's older brother and John was the John that talked to the coroner when George had killed himself. Yes. So they're all wrapped up in it. I don't... Oh, God. What happened? Money. He left a lot of debts and a very complicated will. So James Thomas left a lot of debts. Yes. So he'd borrowed a lot of money to build yes. the houses. Yes. He'd left a burden. Yes. His vision a very was a burden. Bill. Yes. Yes. Shame. I see. Sorry. I'd built JTV up to be such a hero in my head, which I think partially he was, but he died with huge debt, and I don't think... just didn't think about when it was going to end, or when his life was going to end, or his family. And I'm quite angry with him for that. I've yet to see the will, so I'd be interested to see what happened there. The newspaper reports into the suicides of George Bedborough in 1865 and his older brother John, six years later, suggest their deaths were triggered by the strain that their father's will put on his children. James Thomas Bedborough had seemingly left insufficient funds to cover the mounting debts on his many ventures, and it fell to his family to untangle his financial affairs in court. 